Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the IBM Cognos Security and Auditing Webinar. My name is Tafik Habibi. I'm a senior BI consultant with LPA Systems. And on today's agenda, we're going to have an introduction. We're going to talk a little bit about security and auditing, do a one or two demonstrations, and then take some questions. So why is securing your IBM Cognos environment important? It basically ensures that only authorized users have access. It controls what these authorized users have access to. Of course, it controls access to sensitive data, and it provides user data when enabling auditing. Setting up auditing in your IBM Cognos environment provides you a snapshot of that environment. It shows you who is doing what, when are they doing it, and how much of it are they doing. And it also significantly simplifies data collection during a compliance audit. Just as with any software or application implementation where there's a requirements phase, some, some thought needs to be given to security requirements. We need to map out the types of users within the organization, as well as the data access levels, uh, whether it's by region, by function, um, what types of users we have. We also need to uh, determine what authentication sources are being used. Uh, here in this instance, the most common authentication sources are LDAP, or Active Directory, but there are others. We're going to discuss some post-installation activities here in the next few slides. Uh, so in order to secure your uh, Cognos environment, one of the first things to do is to disable anonymous access. Uh, this can be accomplished in IBM Cognos configuration under the security folder. Uh, we also need to add an external name source, one that is used within the organization to manage users. Uh, for example, LDAP or Active Directory. Uh, this is where you would define users and groups in the authentication provider and then reference them in the Cognos namespace to control access. Uh, if you don't have one, you can use the Sun One authentication provider that comes with Cognos. The next thing we need to do is to restrict access. Um, to members of the built-in namespace. By default, uh, the, the access is set to false, and so the users would see what is shown on the slide here. They would be able to access Cognos Connection, uh, navigate to the public uh, folders, and what we need to do is to go into IBM Cognos configuration, uh, change that restrict access to member of the built-in namespace to true, and that means that users would no longer have access to IBM Cognos unless they provide the correct authentication uh, credentials and they'll be able to log in. During content store initialization, uh, a set of built-in and predefined security objects are created. Uh, during this initial setup, the security policies grant unrestricted access to all objects to all users. So we need to secure this post-installation. Uh, one way to do that is to add trusted users or groups as members to the system administrator's role and then remove the everyone group from that group. And we also need to do the same for the other predefined entries like consumers, uh, query users, analysis users, etc. So we need to add trusted members, groups, and then remove the everyone. Uh, all of this can be accomplished in IBM Cognos administration. And while you do that, you also need uh, to take into consideration your license terms. For example, if you have added five members to the system administrators group, um, then you need to make sure that you are licensed for five members or five system administrators. So you need to take that into consideration. Additional information can be uh, available in the administration and security guide, uh, chapter 18. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about groups and roles. Uh, roles represent or control the functionality a user has permission to use. For example, administrator is a role, author is a role, a consumer is a role. And then groups are granted access to content. So if you're a member of a group, you're, you have access or are granted access to reports or packages or, fo or folders. Uh, this can be at a departmental level, for example, executive, sales reps, or accounting or it could be via segments such as geographic regions, industries, or products. Also note that a user can belong to one or more groups or roles, and if users are members of more than one group, then their access permissions are merged. A couple of best practices for authorization. Uh, use groups and roles from the Cognos namespace. 
Uh, the permissions will stay intact even though the members of those groups and roles may change over time. And another advantage is that the contents of the Cognos namespace can be migrated to other Cognos environments without any additional changes. Another best practice is to avoid deny access. The absence of groups on an object already denies access to that object for those groups. So we only need to use deny to override an unavoidable grant. Administrators may use access permissions to secure data by setting access permissions on objects. They can also specify the actions uh, users may perform, whether it's read, write, traverse, or not. So you apply access permissions on objects published as content in Cognos Connection. Uh, packages, folders, reports, portal tabs, workspaces. And access permissions are acquired from the parent entry, uh, but of course they may be replaced at child levels, so you have control over that granularity. Group assignments to an object are assigned under the properties on the permissions tab of an object. So in the screenshot here, we have the sales and marketing cube. If you go to the permissions uh, tab under that, you can assign uh, groups to, to that and then explicitly grant or deny access to users, groups, or roles. Uh, denied access has precedence over granted access. And if the grant and deny permissions are in conflict, access to an entry is always denied. So as mentioned, uh, use deny sparingly. Uh, most organizations don't really need them. Um, but it is available if the need arises. Secured functions and features, these are also known as capabilities. This is where administration tasks uh, uh, can be accomplished. Uh, functional areas, uh, controlled access to functional areas of the user interface. Um, we need to understand these capabilities within the different license groups to stay in compliance. So when a user logs in, the content manager reads the user's permissions and then it determines what tasks the user can perform, whether they're able to uh, open Report Studio, uh, run a, a particular report, um, run Query Studio. And so you can control these from, the, from Cognos administration. Um, hyperlinked uh, items uh, provide additional securable features so you can have more granular fine tuning. In this example, if you look on the screenshot on the right on the slide, under Report Studio, there are additional capabilities, for example, allow external data, uh, bursting, so on and so forth. So you can have that granular activity there uh, to control the access. So having secured our uh, environment, we can now talk about auditing. By setting up auditing and enabling it, you would be in a position to perform capacity planning and performance monitoring, as well as gain insight into content and capability usage. And finally, you would be able to manage your license conformance. And the first thing we need to do um, in order to set up auditing, we need to create a database on the database server. Uh, this database needs to be in a different location other than the content store database. It could be a standalone database. Although that, that's not, it's not necessary, it is considered best practice to do so, uh, so that it because it helps avoid contention issues. Uh, once that database is created, we can update the Cognos configuration to point to that database. The next thing we need to do uh, is to build and configure this DS servlet for the report usage report. So the report usage report is included in the audit package, um, and that report lists lists reports by frequency of use. So if each, for each report, it lists the user and the number of times it was run by that user since the logging database was created. In essence, this report can help you determine if there are any reports that are not being used, and then you can decide to remove them. Uh, it also shows you what maybe some other reports are highly utilized. So it kind of gives you an idea of, of what's being used or what content is being used on the, uh, in the Cognos environment. Uh, this step here, the building of the DS servlet for report usage, is only required if you want to use the report usage report. Uh, the other sample provided reports don't require it. Uh, and you can get more information in the Cognos Administration and Security Guide under uh, Chapter 5, uh, Setting Up Logging. 
The next thing we need to do um, is to set the logging levels. Logging levels are set from the Cognos administration uh, portal page under configuration and then dispatchers and services. Uh, the logging level should be set to basic. Uh, they default to minimal, uh, but in order for auditing to work, they need to be set to basic. Uh, usually anything above basic um, is done in, in conjunction with IBM support when troubleshooting problems. The other two things we need to do is to enable audit the enable audit the native query for report service and audit the native query for batch report service. So these are two options that have check boxes and they allow you to see the SQL statements that are being submitted to the server. Okay. So here's some of the things um, or the tools, if you will, that are available uh, when and after we set up auditing. Uh, the next thing we would do is to look at the sample framework model uh, that is available. Uh, this can be found under your C10 or Cognos 10 location or installation under the web content folder, as well as the sample reports. Uh, those are all located in under web content also, and we will demo the model um, in our demonstration here at the end of the presentation. Next tool available to us for auditing is called the Cognos 10 Audit Extension tool. Uh, it lets us do a variety of audit types like account, content, status, or role capability. Uh, this is an IBM Cognos 10 SDK application. And this particular version is 1.1.01 and will work with IBM Cognos 10 BI versions 10.1 and up. The next tool available is the IBM Cognos BI Users and Capabilities tool. This tool gathers capabilities and group role information associated with users for a namespace. Again, we will demo this uh, towards the end in our demonstration. And lastly, we have the usage queries. Uh, they provide us an understanding of the usage, usage patterns for users that you monitor license compliance. The only prerequisites are that the audit database be set up and configured and the ability to run a script against the audit database. So you would need something like Toad or Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio to be able to run these SQL statements and return data. The only limitations they have is that they are unable to distinguish between Report Studio and Cognos Workspace Advanced and they don't track the uh, metric studio usage. So I'll show you an example. Here's the login info example of the uh, usage query. It's a simple, straightforward SQL statement. Um, again, the only prerequisites are that the audit database be set up. Uh, logging in Cognos is set up to basic, and then you can run it from a SQL tool such as SQL Server Management Studio uh, or Toad. And here we see some of the output. Um, again, the output here is shown from the login info query, the admin query and analysis studio access, the report studio and Cognos workspace advanced access, event studio and the Cognos uh, viewer access. Again, we'll uh, take a look at these um, in, in a real live environment here uh, shortly. Lastly, I want to mention developer works. Uh, there's a document on developer works. It's called Proven Practices Securing the IBM Cognos 10 BI Environment. Uh, you can find it at ibm.com. Um, basically, it is an excellent reference document with tons of information about uh, securing your Cognos BI environment. So check it out uh, for more information on, on security in, in an IBM Cognos environment. Okay, let's jump into our demonstration. I'm going to jump out of the uh, slideshow here and into our development environment. And let's take a look at some of these tools. First, we're going to start off with IBM Cognos Framework Manager. Take a look at the audit model. Um, as you can see, it's the audit CPF uh, file has been expanded or opened here. And we have a variety of query subjects like run jobs, run reports, user logins. Um, as you can see, all of these are available in the audit package. And once we, we're done here, we'll take a jump and take a look at the um, actual reports that come out of the audit package. But here we get a query subject for user logins. So we can take a quick look at that, run a quick test. 
And as you can see, we can get the username, logon time, their session ID, what type of log off operation. Uh, so this is some of the data that the audit database will uh, collect. So we can also have uh, run reports, run jobs, view reports, so you can get username, report name. And of course, you can also modify these query subjects and publish your own auditing or customized auditing uh, reports and packages. Uh, but this gives you a good starting point. Here's the database view. Shows you all the tables uh, that are coming from the audit database. And if we jump into Cognos, public folders, uh, let's go back to our audit database. Samples audit. So here we can, for example, run the executed reports by user report. And we can see, for example, how many reports have been run since last week. We can identify a particular user or any users. So uh, we'll pick my name. And let's see. So here's execute reports by user, uh, which package I used, which report name, and the execution time for that report. Here's the report usage report. We also mentioned in one of the slides. Um, I already have uh, run it earlier, so we'll take a look at some of that output. So you can see here, this gives you the report usage from the audit data. And you can see which um, the username and the actual report uh, and how many times um, it's been used. So you can get an idea of some, some of the usage of some of the reports. Again, you can track uh, reports by package in the past 30 days, user session details. So there's a whole slew of reports that you could use um, in order to audit the database and see who's using what and when are they doing it, get a better idea of what's, uh, what, what kind of activity is happening in the environment. Okay. So we'll, next, we're going to take a look at the um, audit extension. Um, the audit extension here has been installed and set up. There's a link to it. If you follow the instructions, it'll tell you how to launch it. So in this instance, I've configured our development server. So we'll take a look at the properties here when you set it up. Uh, it needs the URL, what version of Cognos you're running, whether it's 10.1 or higher or 8.4. You can give it a description, do any filtering. And then here we've enabled the role audit, content audit, account audit, and status audit. Got to provide it some credentials, and then you'll be able to run the audit. Um, and this basically updates and runs an audit against your system. I won't run it here because it'll take a while, uh, but it will execute an audit on your server and then populate the audit extension uh, database. And we can take a look at some of these reports under the audit extension package. So if we come down here, there's the, co the, audit, the Cognos audit extension full package. And as you can see, there's some of these reports, for example, the role audit and the status audit. So we can take a look at the role audit and maybe we'll take a look at the um, users by capability, for example. I will pick one of the audits we've done before. Refresh. Uh, you wanna see, for example, who's running uh, Cognos Viewer. Uh, we can also have an optional print. Do we want to use all the Cognos Viewer, the toolbar selection, run with options or context menu? Uh, we'll do all the uh, Cognos Viewer options and click on Finish. <clears throat> and now you'll see that the capability Cognos Viewer, this is a list of users that have access to it. 
and then we can also get more details about the particular user. So for example, if you wanted to see what Andy uh, Wilson has access to, you can click down or drill through. And now you can see a list of the capabilities um, for Andy Wilson uh, for audit number four. So you can see that he has administration capability, analysis studio capability, Cognos viewer capability, uh, metric studio, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, we can also do the account audit. Let's do account audit real quick. User account details. So it's for our dev server. And we'll pick a, a user. We'll start off with me. See what kind of account audit we have. Now you can get user account details. So when it was created, when it was modified, so on and so forth. Okay. All right, let's take a quick look at the um, BI users and capabilities application. So that is a batch file that we have to run. So if I double click on that, it will launch it. Again, I have to provide it a dispatcher URI, I'll give it some credentials and a password. Okay, so it'll attempt to, con to uh, connect our uh, or log on to the content store here. We should get results shortly. There we go. And click on OK. Here we go. Now we can take a look at the um, hierarchical tree, if you will, of the IBM user capabilities. So we can look at users by group. Um, so if we look at the Cognos authors, we can get a list of the authors in that group. Um, if we look at the student group, we get a list of the users in the student group. We could also look at roles. So for example, if we look at authors, we get a list of the authors um, within the, uh, the environment. Query users, PowerPlay users, Express authors, Data Manager authors. Kind of get an idea of what's uh, what what has who has access roles. So here we get a list of the users and look at their group membership. So if we check out Andy, we can see that he's a member of Cognos authors and he has these roles: author and authors. Um, let's find my account for Tafik. I'm under Cognos Administrators and Cognos Authors, so I have all of these um, roles. So pretty, pretty deep information or level of detail, if you will, on the environment as to who are the users and what capabilities they have within the environment. Okay, so let's exit from here. And lastly, I want to show you the uh, usage queries. So I'm going to jump into SQL Server Management Studio. As you can see, I'm pointing to the audit database. Actually, this is created when you create the audit uh, database. You're going to create the audit database in SQL Server, and then the tables within that database are created by Cognos when you set up uh, in Cognos configuration when you set up auditing. Okay, so we're going to open up a file that contains our audit usage queries 
and we'll take a look at the login info. I think we showed uh, output in these slides, but we'll run these again against the uh, live environment here. So we can run the login info query. Okay, as you can see, get a list of the uh, usernames, the first session and the last session. So you can see who's been using the environment and when was the last time they used it. We can also run the admin query. So the admin query returns data for those who are um, doing administrative type tasks where they've accessed the portal, uh, the administration tabs, if you will, within the portals. So we can run that. You get a list of all the users. Uh, when was the first time they accessed it? When was the last time they accessed it? And of course, how many accesses, um, access page accesses or access there are. Uh, so it gives you that kind of information. Um, here's the query analysis or query and analysis studio um, access query. So we can run that and it'll give you a username first time they accessed it, last time they accessed it, and how many times they've accessed Query Studio and Analysis Studio. Uh, this is the Report Studio and Cognos Workspace Advanced Query. So we'll run that, and that'll give you the <clears throat> username again, first access, last access, and how many times they've accessed the studio. And we'll do, a, we'll do the Event Studio one also and run that and you'll see again gives you a list and how many times they've accessed that so you can see where the benefits are from an audit type of uh, approach or license compliance you can see when the first time and the last time a user has accessed maybe uh, if they haven't in a while uh, they're not using the system you can remove them from the licensing um, so that you stay in compliance so we'll take a look at the cognos viewer query here this should be our last query and we'll execute that. And again, you'll see uh, the username, first access, last access, and obviously the uh, report runs or viewed or count. Okay. So again, uh, valuable information that helps in auditing um, your environment, making sure you know people that have access are accessing, if people are inactive or active, and how many reports they're running. So it gives you generally a, a good idea of what's happening in the environment. Okay, I'm going to switch back to our slides and see if we have any questions. Okay, so looks like we have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is, um, any speed bumps during the installation of the various auditing tools? And the answer would be no, not really. Uh, the instructions were clear and straightforward. Uh, my biggest challenge during the install was knowing the location of the Java runtime environment. Uh, which is needed to uh, compile some of the necessary files. Once you figure that out, everything kind of falls into, play, into place. So the instructions were, were straightforward, didn't really have any issues. Once everything got compiled, they ran just fine. Um, the next question we have is, I've had the audit database running for a while. I have several queries that are not associated with report runs. Can you tell me where these queries are coming from? So one thing to keep in mind is that you may see many queries in the audit tables that cannot be associated with a particular report. So this is the case because auditing captures all queries, including those generated uh, when navigating multidimensional packages or data sources. So for example, the queries um, needed to show you the members of a particular dimension level when you're authoring a report, those are recorded in the audit table and they're not necessarily associated with the report. Uh, so you will see those. You will see those queries as you're authoring a report. They get submitted to the server to navigate or traverse the, uh, the hierarchy. They get submitted. You'll see them, and they won't be associated with the report. So that's kind of normal uh, behavior, if you will, uh, from the audit database. Uh, the third question we have is, I've been getting an error running the audit reports that contain the query text that Cognos provides. Have you run into this problem? Yes, actually we have. Um, SQL queries are stored in the audit database as blobs. And there is a bug in the framework manager model uh, that Cognos provides for the audit database. 
Uh, in Framework Manager, you can only reference a column of the type or data type blob if the query subject has a determinant. And the audit framework model doesn't contain that determinant, and that's why you're getting the error message. I think the quickest way to do that is to just add that determinant and then um, uh, republish the model, and you should be good to go. Uh, I would say Google the, uh, the problem. You'll, you'll be able to do a quick search, and you'll find plenty of information and specifics on how to define that determinant and on which query subjects to define it, and then you should be well on your way. Okay. Um, looks like I'm almost out of time. If there are any other questions, um, we'll, we'll try to respond to them via email. And I'd like to thank everybody today for their time. And we'll, we'll follow up with any other remaining questions, again, like I said, via email. Everybody have a good afternoon, and thanks again.